Hello and welcome to Indus News from Islamabad. I'm Hirao Safa and these are the headlines. Qatar's foreign minister says Islamabad and Doha share a common vision of having a peaceful and stable Afghanistan. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman Al Thani was addressing a press conference along with his Pakistani counterpart in Islamabad. He said Pakistan played a leading role in facilitating the Afghan peace process. Shah Mahmood Qureshi, meanwhile, warned of peace spoilers, saying Afghanistan should not be turned into an arena of proxy wars. Earlier, CIA Director William Burns called on Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa to discuss the latest developments in Afghanistan. First international commercial plane has departed Kabul airport since Western countries finished evacuations from Afghanistan 10 days ago. The plane took off after the new Taliban government allowed some 200 foreigners, including Americans, to fly out of the city. A top Qatari official said the airport is about 90% ready for operations, but its reopening is planned gradually. Israeli forces have injured over 100 Palestinian protesters in the West Bank city of Nablus. Palestinian Red Crescent Society said at least one man was shot with live fire and seven with rubber-coated steel bullets. The protesters had gathered against Israel's aggression towards Palestinian detainees and harassment of their families. In North Macedonia, at least 14 people have died in a fire at a hospital that treats COVID-19 patients. Meanwhile, Pakistan has registered 84 deaths from the virus and over 4,000 cases in the past 24 hours. Globally, the COVID-19 death toll has exceeded 4.59 million, while the case load has topped 222 million. Well, those were the headlines, news in detail coming after the short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now, the news in detail. Qatar's foreign minister said Islamabad and Doha share a common vision of having a peaceful and stable Afghanistan. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman Al Thani was addressing a press conference along with his Pakistani counterpart in Islamabad. He said Pakistan played a leading role in facilitating the Afghan peace process. Al Thani also urged the international community to support peaceful transition in Afghanistan. Shah Mahmood Qureshi, meanwhile, warned of peace spoilers, saying Afghan soil should not be turned into an arena of proxy wars. The foreign minister stressed the need to avoid a humanitarian catastrophe in the war-torn country. Earlier, Al Thani also called on Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan. CIA's director William Burns has hailed Pakistan's role in the Afghan peace process and successful evacuation operations. Burns called on Pakistan's Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa and DG Inter Services Intelligence Lieutenant General Fez Hamid. According to the military's media wing, the two sides discussed matters of mutual interest, regional security and the evolving situation in Afghanistan. The CIA director pledged to play a role for further improvement in diplomatic cooperation with Pakistan at all levels. The Army chief said Pakistan will continue to cooperate with its international partners for peace in the region. He also reaffirmed Islamabad's commitment to ensuring a stable and prosperous future for Afghan people. Pakistan's aircraft carrying relief goods and humanitarian assistance for the Afghan people has arrived in Kabul. It is one of the three C-130 aircraft that have been sent off to the war-torn country by Islamabad. Officials say the package comprises around 10 tons of flour, 1.5 tons of butter and a huge quantity of medicine. Earlier, the country's foreign office said Islamabad will continue to do its best to help Afghans during the challenging environment. It added that Pakistan also urges the international community to play its role to prevent the humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. Meanwhile, China has also pledged $31 million in immediate aid to Afghanistan. 
Foreign Minister Vangji announced the measures at the Sixth Nation Conference on Afghanistan. He said the establishment of the new interim government in Kabul is a necessary step to restore order in the country. About 200 people have reportedly been cleared by the Taliban to leave Kabul on a Qatari flight. It is unclear at this stage how many Americans are expected to be on board the flight to Doha or what the nationalities of the remaining evacuates may be. The Taliban acting foreign minister Mavlavi Amir Khan Mutaki thanked Qatar's envoy for Doha's efforts in restarting flights out of Kabul. The last U.S. military planes left the city's airport just ahead of an August 31st deadline, marking the full withdrawal of American forces. That landmark moment came only two weeks after the Taliban seized control of the capital. The flights come two days after the Taliban announced an interim government. The U.S. says it has not validated the interim setup but will continue to engage with its for evacuations. Meanwhile, the head of the interim Taliban government has called on former officials to return, saying safety will be guaranteed. For more on this, we are joined by Dr. Hasnain Javed, foreign affairs expert. Thank you for your time. Now, Mr. Hasnain, the U.S. and its allies have more or less conditioned release of Afghanistan's fund based on their checklist that they want the Taliban to strictly follow. Would this carrot and stick method benefit Afghanistan that has just come out of a two decades long war? I mean, different kind of sanctions, different kinds of uh, promises, different kinds of uh, understanding between the different uh, uh, nations. Uh, it is uh, entirely a different part, but um, if you could see the White House spokesperson, Jen Paskey, uh, that she said that there would uh, be no recognition of Taliban government soon. So there are so many other countries which is working on it. And uh, if I talk about the understanding and economic conditions, which is, uh, I mean, uh, recently it says that China will be the will be our main partner for the Pakistan and showed zero threats for uh, Afghan soil. So one of the major important pivot point is that first they have to assure. And second, the, uh, China has given the grant of 300 billion uh, for the recent grant and the many other grants will be there. And if I talk about the ice of uh, grants and other things, which is uh, 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 again a different issue. Uh, in August 15, the uh, economy has shrunk by 1.9% uh, in two, uh, 2020, whereas the 80% of the Afghanistan budget is financed by aid, as everybody knows. And the recent criteria, same as the 37 million that SDR currently, which is equivalent to 52.2, uh, nearly uh, not enough to sustain it for long. So uh, there is another uh, aid which I talk about, and you just, uh, uh, I mean, mentioned about that, which is the Da, uh, da Afghanistan Bank, listed as a 10 billion in uh, asset for uh, 2021. Uh, so including 1.3 billion uh, gold and uh, 362 million in the foreign uh, currency cash as a reserve. So in this situation. Um, there are many other uh, uh, contingency plan could happen, but uh, the restrictions, sanctions, and uh, acceptability is the main issue right now uh, for the economic situation. As far as Pakistan is concerned, uh, there are many other uh, ways we, we are into the uh, uh, LAC, we are into the APTA, we are into the 97% of the work has been done in APTA, and we are the uh, largest uh, agreement on Afghan Pakistan tr uh, transit trade agreement. So, uh, Pakistan is on move, Pakistan is in a uh, way to relationship with the Afghanistan, but the peace is must. Without peace, there is no economy, uh, there is no anything. But uh, uh, one thing I wanted to assure that uh, before, if I see in 1996 to, to, to 2001, it was the era where was the, uh, it, it was a different Taliban. Now this time around, the, uh, the, the expected government is not that what we, we the whole world were expected. And the new thing is that this Taliban, how could this Taliban accept China? How could this uh, uh, Taliban can, uh, could accept uh, uh, Russia? So this uh, Trika is going to be, uh, I mean, uh, different in nature. So I, 
uh, in my personal view, in my personal opinion, I, I'm not seeing that uh, way that there would be the grant or the aid problem. But there is another internal issues have been there because, uh, for example, there is a parallel black economy. So I don't want to mention, uh, I don't want it to be, uh, I don't want to get into that way, but there is a parallel uh, black economy is there. I mean, the largely Americans involvement would there into the uh, large scale production of opium and other things. And mostly the Afghan economy is uh, dependent on the black economy. So um, uh, I'm not going into uh, the production details that how much and uh, how much billion and the tons and tons of the opium is being done or the weed or any other thing and obviously the weaponry. So uh, the situation is quite uh, dramatic. Uh, but in that case, Pak the situation for the Pakistan and the guarantee for the Pakistan is must. Uh, our foreign minister, uh, our uh, DGIS, PR, uh, uh, is mentioned clearly uh, on the behalf of uh, military that the peace is must. We must uh, Afghan Taliban or the new government, which is uh, which was I mean not expected. Like Hassan Akhundzada was not expected. Uh, Abdul Ghani brother uh, was expected in a different way, but he was a, a, he was a co-founder, but he is uh, now next to the command. And uh, Sirajuddin Haqqani, Mullah Yaqub, um, uh, Amir uh, Muttaki. So this uh, uh, construction is interim. So far, we cannot say. I mean, for another six months, we have to see uh, the different aspects and different ideas. Uh, what is going to be happen? But the most important thing is that the uh, United States uh, connection uh, and the. Uh, Indian factor is very important. Uh, I can, uh, I mean, uh, this is uh, a news for you people might, might be, I mean, there are so many uh, Chinese companies working already in Afghanistan. So uh, the Chinese pact with Afghanistan might get the better economic uh, condition in Afghanistan. So this is the very initial, uh, you can say that this is very initial aid that has been given for, uh, for about uh, 300 billion. So maybe they, they, they would increase in that, or obviously, we still cannot comment on the, the, the previous economy, which is already dependent on 80% of the aid, as I told you earlier. So even if it is uh, uh, other conditions, if uh, the, the whole world cannot come into that way. But very important things why they are not accepting. Although the economic condition, although the peace condition, they are not out of war. The main very important thing is that the Taliban stated that we are now out of war zone and we don't want to uh, be, uh, we don't want to continue the war and we want to be, we want a complete peace, economic prosperity and harmonization. So let it uh, be with the harmonization process. So why, why are not they accepting uh, if the Vit Vatican City in uh, Vatican City, the complete Christian theoc uh, theocratic society or a theocrat uh, theocracy based uh, or uh, society is there. So uh, what is the hurdle bit behind the, uh, I mean, accepting the Taliban? So if I talk about the organization, uh, uh, governmental structure, so it is mainly or parallelly, or I can see uh, uh, like the, the way the, the Iran take up the government. Uh, it is a theocratic, complete theocratic government. Same as that they announced that uh, it would be complete uh, Sharia based or uh, uh, government, or it would be complete, uh, uh, you can say, the, uh, the Sharia law based uh, uh, system. So what this uh, do is the government would comprise of 25 ministries with consultative council. So this is the idea they, they are uh, uh, getting into uh, the consultative council or the Shura or the 12 Muslim scholars or the loyal jirga, or you might say the uh, grand assembly. So it is the same model where it has been taken by their, and so you have seen that uh, I just missed the name uh, that uh, the one is the religious head of the whole, uh, uh, I mean, Taliban. So 
Next, the, then, then is the superior consul, and then is the governmental structure, which is the presidential system. So it is parallel to uh, uh, Iran system. Now you can see the, you can say that in the Southeast Asian region, uh, we have another theocratic uh, government. I mean, there is uh, Pakistan is so-called democratic. Obviously, uh, I don't know. We are uh, the mixed democrats or the whatever type we have, but. Uh, it is might be theocratic government, it is democratic, autocratic, any critic, <laughs> I don't know. More, moreover, it is based on the critic organization. But, well, uh, the structure would have, like, uh, it is complete theocracy-based structure, which is dependent on the Sharia law. And uh, as you have uh, heard, the name of the uh, Iranian um, structure is Al Walayatul Faqih has been uh, given the and coined term by uh, 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 Imam Khomeini. So it was the uh, I mean the structure that one the is the minister of their area. For example, he is the minister for defense, but he must have the uh, authority on uh, Islamic Sharia laws. Then, as the one is the, uh, uh, I mean, the minister for the uh, uh, for the finance, minister for the production, minister for transport, minister for anything, but must have the highest degree of Sharia. Right. What are the biggest challenges standing in the way of a stable Afghan government that could boost regional connectivity? See. Uh, what Taliban says, I mean, this is uh, uh, to be on the positive point. I have uh, taken up the few, uh, I mean, uh, mixed points, not uh, uh, completely pro, uh, pro, but not completely negative. But if uh, I focus on the Taliban, what Taliban want, they want a strong and healthy relationship with the neighbor and all other country based on the mutual respect, respect and interaction. Then is the law uh, about the territories. So they, uh, what they are saying is the that uh, not conflict with the co complete Islamic law and the country's national values. So what they want, they want national identity. Second, this is uh, Taliban or the ca uh, cabinet selection. Why, why should we let other pick our uh, cabinet uh, when other countries pick their own? So this uh, this is very valid point. So uh, uh, in comparison, like uh, in 1996 Taliban till 2001 Taliban, the first Taliban, previous Taliban, and this Taliban is entirely different. I don't know, you can, uh, it is very soon to comment that, uh, which sort of this government, but they have the their internal issues as well. It is completely internal. There are so many other groups in power and they wanted to be in power, but the surety of this Taliban is, uh, what I'm saying is the, uh, the uh, Afghan spokesperson even invite, uh, I mean, it's very important, the China factor. So what we have to have in our mind is the China factor. So a France spokesperson said to be more involved in Afghanistan peace and reconciliation process and play a bigger role in future reconstruction and economic development. So a spokesperson, um, uh, um, uh, 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 the mullah, <coughs> uh, I think the spokesperson is now has been changed or the same. So. Well, what what this is is in the, the brother of uh, the, uh, the foreign minister, Wei Yang Yi, the Be Beijing as the part of group's diplomatic outreach following Kabul fall. China said it was looking forward to the friend and cooperative ties with Taliban. So, uh, just uh, I mean, even before the government, even before the governmental structure, if uh, even before they announced uh, the governmental structure, the China was with them. And now uh, it is apparent that China is completely in Afghanistan. And uh, if the condition in Pakistan, there is a Gwadar, there is a complete route to the landlocked countries. There is a Uzbekistan, uh, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, the, the five countries which is landlocked. And then is a route to Afghanistan. Uh, we have a, a, a APTA. And APTA was the trade transit pro program, but still it was not that much I mean, quicker, faster, and everything. But there are so many other uh, issues could happen. But the no whole dependency is on uh, this issue. And second important point is the uh, the the Putin uh, uh, what Putin says. So for more trustworthy partners, the, uh, the what, what they say is that uh, this Taliban government is much better and much 
forceful and much uh, uh, continuable because uh, uh, the Putin says that the previous Taliban uh, government was the puppet government in Kabul, uh, the, 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 the Ghani government. So uh, Russia is now, uh, um, I mean, uh, on uh, uh, on the same page. So they believe that the, the Taliban takeover on Afghanistan can strengthen its partnership with non-Western powers. So the clear divide, uh, the clear divide, the paradigm shift. But it is one is the paradigm shift. Second is the psychological shift. It's a complete psychological shift. Taliban uh, were in, uh, was continuous in uh, war for the 20, uh, 20 years, for 20 long years. So this is the right time. Uh, they must have to focus on the economy. They must have to focus on the internal current affairs. They must have to focus on uh, uh, the domestic e uh, e economy. If there is no economy, if there is no, I mean, um, uh, I mean, uh, the structural uh, things, I mean, uh, I mean, in in an easy way, if they have don't if they don't have food, there there is no economy. If there is no economy, there is just a war. So, so there is need of the psychological, uh, I mean, uh, uh, change. And uh, I can see that little uh, economic change, uh, uh, but the different elements like Daesh and uh, ISIS, uh, yes, it could be. Uh, the factor for the concern. Um, what I see that Pakistan military have played a, a wonderful role in that, and we have to be. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, like a, uh, uh, we we have to watch it in, in depth that what is going to happen in other six months, and that uh, other six months is prominent and very much important. All right, Dr. Hassan Javed, thank you for speaking to Indus News. Now we're moving on. The U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has warned that time is running out for Iran to return to the nuclear deal. In a press briefing, Blinken said Iran's advancing nuclear program can render the return to deal is pointless. He said U.S. envoy for Iran Rob Malley is consulting with Russia and European states on the matter. This comes after International Atomic Energy Agency accused Iran for failing to explain uranium traces at three undeclared sites. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi has warned the counterproductive approach of the UN agency will disrupt the negotiation process. He made these remarks in a phone call with European Council President Charles Michel. Raisi said Iran's cooperation with the IAEA shows its will to observe transparency in its nuclear activities. Earlier, U.S. Navy's Mideast Base 5th Fleet said it will launch a new task force invoking airborne sailing and underwater drones. Israeli forces have injured over 100 Palestinian protesters in Nablus city of the West Bank. Palestinian Red Crescent Society said at least one man was shot with live fire and seven rubber-coated steel bullets. The protesters had gathered against Israel's aggressions towards Palestinian detainees and harassment of their families. Massive rallies are being held throughout the West Bank in support of the prisoners in Israeli jails. The occupying forces are also arresting relatives of Palestinians who are on the run after escaping from a maximum security prison. The Arab coalition says it has destroyed several explosive little drones launched by the Houthis. In a statement, the coalition said the drones were aimed at the Saudi city of Khamis Mashad. Meanwhile, the coalition backed Yemeni military claimed to have launched the biggest air raids on rebel sites in the city of Taiz. A Yemeni army official said airstrikes destroyed ammunition and missile stores, rocket launchers and a command and control room. The Arab media said the coalition's missile struck the city's airport and an air defense military base. Earlier, 60 rebels and 18 pro-government troops were killed in fighting for the strategic city of Marib. In North Macedonia, at least 14 people have died in a fire at a hospital that treats COVID-19 patients. Globally, the COVID-19 death toll has exceeded 4.59 million, while the caseload has stopped 222 million. Details in the following report. 
The mutating variants of COVID-19, rising cases and faltering vaccination drives have prompted nations to step up restrictive measures once again. The Pan America Health Organization has warned that new cases in Americas are nearly double the rate than last year at this time amid lagging vaccination rates. US President Joe Biden is set to present a six-pronged strategy to fight the spread of dangerous Delta variant. In Europe, the Block Medicines Regulator has added an extremely rare nerve-damaging disorder as a possible side effect of AstraZeneca's vaccine. Meanwhile, Austria has decided to impose restrictions on unvaccinated people in future as the occupancy rates in intensive care units rise. Klar ist, dass wir it is clear that we do not intend to impose any restrictions on the vaccinated, but will put in place protective measures for the unvaccinated where necessary. There is therefore a step-by-step -step plan, which we will also forward to you, that affects the unvaccinated. Germany is extending its COVID-19 emergency aid for struggling companies by three months until the end of this year. Ireland has announced to give vaccine booster shots to elderly people who were fully vaccinated at least six months ago. New Zealand has reached a deal with Spain to receive over a quarter of a million doses of the Pfizer vaccine. Meanwhile, despite rising cases, Sydney's cafes, restaurants and pubs are set to reopen in the second half of October. I want to stress that whilst uh, today the New South Wales government is outlining our plan, our roadmap for the way forward in New South Wales, that we're definitely not out of the woods. Uh, we know that case numbers are likely to peak in the next week or so, and we also know that our hospital system will be under the greatest stress in October. In Asia, Taiwan has announced to issue stimulus coupons to boost your consumer spending by $7.22 billion to support its pandemic-hit economy. Japan has extended curves in Tokyo and other regions until the end of this month to prevent overwhelming of hospitals. Coronavirus has claimed another 84 lives in Pakistan over the past 24 hours. The health ministry says the dead toll has reached 26,497. It said more than 4,000 people contracted the virus overnight. The country's caseload has exceeded 1.19 million, while over a million and 76,000 have recovered. There are more than 91,000 active cases, of which nearly 5,400 are critical. The ministry says almost 21 million people in Pakistan have been fully vaccinated. Indonesia and Australia have agreed to boost ties in the areas of defence and security. The two sides signed a series of deals in a ministerial meeting in Jakarta. Indonesian officials say memoranda of understanding were reached on counter-terrorism, defence and cyber security. They say the possibility of Indonesian military cadets attending Australian ac academies were also discussed. Meanwhile, the two sides also exchanged views on the political developments in Afghanistan and Myanmar. They also expressed support for the peace efforts of a Southeast Asian regional envoy. Australian Defence and foreign ministers are on a foreign nation visit to Indonesia, India, South Korea and the US. More news stories coming up after the short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. In Morocco, long ruling Justice and Development Party has suffered a crushing defeat to liberal rivals in parliamentary elections. In the provisional results announced by the Interior Minister, the party saw its support collapse from 125 seats to just 12. The national rally of independence backed 97 seats so far the highest among the parties that contested the polls. Meanwhile, Authentic City and Modernity Party ranked second with 82 seats, followed by Istiklal Party with 78. The turnout in the parliamentary elections was just over 50 percent higher than in 2016. In the U.S., Robert Durr's murder trial is nearing its conclusion six years after his apparent confession to multiple killings in a documentary. Durst is accused of killing his friend Susan Berman at her Beverly Hills home in 2000. As closing statements began, Los Angeles County prosecutors compared multi-million millionaire hires testimony to Cockroach Soup. The prosecutors showed a photograph of a bowl full of insects in court urging jurors to discard all of Durr's testimony. Meanwhile, defense lawyers objected to the photos but were overruled by Superior Court Judge Mark Wyndham. 
Prosecutors alleged Durst killed Berman because she knew too much about the disappearance of his wife in 1982. North Korea has celebrated the 73rd anniversary of its foundation with a nighttime military parade. Leader Kim Jong-un attended the event which was held at the Kim Tusang Square in the capital Pyongyang. Paramilitary and public security forces wearing hazmat suits with medical grade marched at the square. However, unlike last October, no missiles were seen or mentioned in the reports nor did Kim deliver any speech. In India, heavy monsoon floods have displaced more than a million people in the northern Uttar Pradesh state. The displaced have been forced to live in tents on roads after their houses were submerged in water. The victims in the state's Gorakhpur city took shelters on higher grounds with their cattle in makeshift tents alongside roads. They say they are starving and awaited government aid. Rain support two-thirds of India's 1.25 billion population living in rural areas that rely on farming. However, excessive precipitation causes problems like floods, landslides and waterborne diseases in the country. In Spain, a wildfire has forced some 500 people to evacuate from the southern resort of Estepona. In a statement, officials said that about 255 fighters are extinguishing the fire. It added that the fire broke out in the mountains of Sierra Barmeja and strong winds are making the extinguishing work difficult. Wildfires had so far ravaged over 74,000 hectares in Spain. Large wildfires have destroyed various parts of the world this year, fueled by extremely hot and dry weather conditions. In the U.S., a statue of Confederate Commander Robert Lee has been removed from its base in Virginia after a year-long legal battle. More on this report. Since 1890, the memorial has stood at Mount Avenue in Richmond, the former capital of the pro-slavery Confederacy. One of the controversial Civil War leaders has been the focus of protests in the United States over racial injustices. It's a beautiful moment um, in this country. You know, this isn't the end, but these sign this signifies that we're accepting the past for what it really is. We can't hold the Confederacy and, and people like Robert E. Lee on statues anymore. We've got to hold the truth on a statue. The 21-foot bronze statue of Robert E. Lee is one of the largest in the United States. Memorials that honor leaders of the Confederate side have become targets of protests against racism. Defenders of the statue say they are tributes to the bravery of those who fought in the Civil War to defend the South. It's been a long time coming. I'm, I'm a uh, native of Richmond. I've been here all my life. I'm 60-some years old. And so I've been passing through and seeing this. But to finally come down, man, it it's a moment of joy for me because it represents so much of oppression, depression, because who Robert E. Lee represents. Earlier this week, the Virginia Supreme Court unanimously ruled in two cases that the statue could be removed. During the last six years, more than 300 symbols of the Confederacy and white supremacy have been taken down, while some 2,000 still stand. And now it's time to take a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Auto giant Toyota says it will invest over $100 million for local production of hybrid electric vehicles in Pakistan. The company said it has plans for localization of components and planned expansion at Karachi Sport Qasim Industrial Hub. This comes after the company's officials held a meeting with Prime Minister Imran Khan and Istanbul. The officials also hailed the Pakistan government's policies to encourage low carbon mobility solutions. The Wall Street stocks have surged after weekly jobless claims fell to a near 18-month low, allowing fears of a slowing economic recovery. 
The Labor Department said initial claims for state unemployment benefits dropped to over 300,000. The shares of J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo and Citigroup gained over 1%. All the major bursts were landed in positive categories. Meanwhile, the oil prices remained steady as Delta variant continues to weigh on the demand outlook. For the weather updates, we have Muneeb Hamid with us. Welcome to the weather forecast. Now we're going to start with Abu Dhabi where the weather is expected to be hot with temperatures rising to 40 degrees Celsius while in Amsterdam the temperatures are steady at 24 with an unexpected thunderstorm today. Now if we head to Ankara there is also sunny weather with temperatures at 30. Now moving down under to Auckland the temperature is chilly at 16 with rain in forecast. Now if you are traveling to Bangkok there will be thunderstorm with temperatures around 29 degrees Celsius. Now in Beijing Temperatures are at 27, accompanied with layer of clouds in the sky. While Beirut will also experience partly sunny weather with temperatures at 31. Meanwhile, Berliners will experience temperatures at 26 degrees Celsius, accompanied with sunny sky. Now, if we're heading to Cairo, the sun will be out with temperatures at 37 with clear sunny sky in the forecast. And down under in Canberra, the temperatures are at 19 with partly cloudy weather today. In Islamabad, temperatures are at 29 with thunderstorm in the forecast. While in Jakarta, the temperatures are steady at 33 along with the rain today. And that is all for now. Back to you. Thank you, Muneeb Hamid, for the latest updates. You can follow us on social media at Indus.news.